my lords. Today we should discuss some of the most dangerous, enigmatic and potentially destructive entities that we know to roam our galaxy. The creatures that we will discuss in detail are not for the squeamish or faint hearted. You have been warned. We begin with the Voidspawn. The Voidspawn is a marvellous creature and perhaps related to the race of aliens who infested several hundred worlds with great devouring worm creatures to use as an activated weapon. The Voidspawn could be a continuation of that research. It could of course just be a naturally occurring creature who happens to be able to survive in a vacuum, travel great distances and also has the ability to traverse the hyperlane network and lay its eggs in planets. We initially discovered the Voidspawn when we encountered seismic disturbances on the newly settled world of Galice 581G. Colonization had just begun on the world when seismologists discovered unusual activity just beneath the planet's crust. As it turned out, a larval Voidspawn had hatched and was slowly consuming parts of the planet, growing gradually in size. We were lucky our excellent scientists caught the incident early and made the decision to allow the monster to grow in size. The colony was evacuated and a military fleet brought in to stand by in case the creature was hostile. The creature eventually grew so large it cracked the planet, unfurling great appendages it slithered out of the broken world and perhaps unsurprisingly became immediately hostile to the garrison fleet. Fortunately, the men and women of the Commonwealth are used to difficult combat situations, and although studying the creature while alive would have been preferable, through concentrated tachyon lance bursts, coupled with copious amounts of whirlwind missile fire. Most noteworthy was the creature's offensive capabilities. It fired living missiles that tracked the heat or the radiation of our vessels. These missiles were quite remarkable, able to penetrate shields and boring great holes into our battleship's neutronium armour. Indeed, a cruiser was split in two when it drifted too close to the beast, ripped apart by its great appendages. Our biologists are working on replicating the technology, and perhaps we can use these living missiles ourselves. Next on the list we have a race of aliens called the Prihi, Iki. Although not a specific singular entity, they are nevertheless deserving to be on this list. The Prihi are a race of diminutive but insanely murderous gecko-like creatures. These reports have been buried for several decades, but I am happy to bring them out of the top secret pile for you now. According to the records, we encountered the Prihi on the planet Gish. The planet was encased in a shield, which appeared to double up as a time lock of sorts. Effectively, this created a planet-wide prison for these creatures. Our scans could penetrate the shield and showed us that the race who occupied the planet appeared to be quite small bipedals, resembling terrestrial geckos. They had opposable thumbs and stand at approximately 25 centimeters in height, or a little less than one foot tall. Frankly, from the images, they looked quite adorable. Our science teams, intrigued by the shield, set about attempting to understand it, with the idea that they could potentially bring it down. However, in the meantime, we continue to scan the planet in an attempt to get further information on this race of aliens. It is from these scans that we identified that they referred to themselves as the Prihi Tihi and at one point were a dominant race in our galaxy. If their own records are to be believed, they were among the most xenophobic, bloodthirsty race to have ever reached sentience. Supposedly, the Prihi were preyed upon for almost their entire existence by the numerous predators of Gish. They eventually achieved sentience and used tools as a means of self-defense. Being herbivores, the Prihi had no use for hunting and used weapons to primarily exterminate any species on their world that posed a threat to them and there were many. They carried this mindset with them to the stars. When the Prihi emerged from Gish, they achieved interstellar travel around the year 1860. They extended rapidly over that time until they made first contact with the kingdom of Partagoa, which had up until that point been enjoying slow expansion, using only chemical propulsion for approximately a thousand years. This was made possible due to the Partagoans' long lifespan and the use of preservation technology, similar to the Yat. In one of the universe's great ironies, the Partagoans were the exact opposite of the Prihi in almost every imaginable way. The Prihi was small, the Partagoans were enormous, growing to approximately 3 meters in length and weighing in at 600 kilograms when fully grown. Their crab-like appearance also closely resembled one of the many 
and more feared natural predators that still existed on Gish, largely due to its ability to hide in deep ocean. The Preki unleashed a genocidal war on the Partagoans, but the haphazard method in which they engaged it allowed the outer colonies of the Partagoans to capture several of their vessels and transmit their findings back to the homeworlds, before ultimately being overrun and exterminated. Bringing us back to present day, it remains unclear who exactly conquered the Preki and put them behind the shield. Perhaps it was the Holy Guardians, although they tend to be less forgiving. We think it was much more likely the enigmatic observers, but sadly we will never know. In any case, despite knowing all this history, our scientists had the wonderful idea that they could bring the shield down. This idea resulted in the loss of not only the science vessel and full crew, but a total of 15 battleships, and triple that number in escort vessels, as we ultimately had to subdue and bomb the planet into submission. Not the Commonwealth's finest hour. On to the third item on this list, the Stellar Devourer. The Stellar Devourer is one of the galaxy's true wonders, a truly magnificent but nevertheless terrifying creature. This beast is composed entirely of energy and literally feeds on stars, consuming them utterly. The Devourer has six great appendages that are seemingly impermeable to heat and radiation as it forces these appendages deep into the star's photosphere, latching on. Then its great maw begins to suck and consume the star's energy. We first found the Devourer in the Zeta Tunicae system, feeding on a yellow dwarf star. The system's planets had long since frozen over. The Devourer seemed content to be left feeding, and the science vessel investigating smartly kept its distance. Disturbing this creature from feeding would likely not go well for us. It remains there to this day, and we monitor it closely. Next on the list, and near the top, we have the Dimensional Horror. We have had precisely two encounters with the horror. Or perhaps there is more than one. I'm not sure which is more terrifying. The first encounter was in the black hole system of Cygnus 1. Science vessel Archimedes was immediately attacked upon entering the system by a being of unknown origin. Incorporeal claws appeared outside the ship, scraping at the shields in an attempt to crush the vessel. Before the crew knew what was going on, they were hit by a massive beam of purple energy utterly obliterated the vessel. All hands were lost. Since the incident in Cygnus 1, we have only sent back automated probes, and what we found was most distressing. A colossal, six-limbed monstrosity appears to be stuck in a dimensional portal of sorts. It wriggles and writhes, attempting to escape its prison. We've no idea how long it's been trapped, but it is clearly incredibly capable, and possibly psionic in nature given the claws it can conjure. The second incident, and I might add a far more significant encounter we have had regarding this creature, was part of Operation Broken Gate. I won't revisit the encounter in full, but effectively our science teams, led by the late Dr. Weir, commanding the vessel Event Horizon, encountered an ancient alien temple. However, upon landing on the planet, the crew and Dr. Weir were mind-controlled by some incorporeal mind-bending creature. Body cam footage shows them being marched into the temple where they found a machine and they began to tinker with it. What happened shortly after was truly terrifying. The machine when activated summoned an Edrich horror of such a size it cracked the planet in two. This monster spoke to us and referred to itself as the Elder One, demanding we bow down and grovel before it, offering to grant protection and wisdom but should we refuse we would suffer total annihilation. Fortunately for humanity, it would appear that this creature is affected by archimeters and kinetic batteries, just like everything else in the galaxy. Strike Force Gamma blew the creature apart piecemeal. And now, at the top of this list, the most dangerous entity to occupy the galaxy is you, my lords. Should I mispronounce a word, or several? I jest, of course. In reality, there is something far more heinous, and it is known as the worm. We know of the worm through a previous report codenamed the Horizon Signal. The report details an account of how an advanced alien empire became corrupted, misguided and lost to a highly insidious creature from another dimension. This creature appears to occupy a similar realm to that of the dimensional horror and was also able to use psionic corruption to enslave an alien species and convince them to build devices 
to allow it to traverse into our realm. Corrupted empires can often be identified from the overzealous use of the phrases what was will be and that the worm loves us and we love the worm. I shall briefly summarise the data packets and reports from the perspective of the empire who fell to the warp beast. It all began when an alert communications officer identified a faint signal amid gamma ray flashes from a black hole. The signal was encoded in our own language and contained cryptic phrases like gravity is desire and time is sight. It also provided coordinates near the black hole and ended with a specific message to the captain of our science vessel, the Banshee. As the Banshee was the nearest ship, it was sent to investigate. As the Banshee approached the signal's coordinates, they experienced unusual spatial distortions and lensing effects. All of the crew reported the phenomena, but the transmission suddenly became distorted and communications ceased. The ship, crew and signal disappeared without a trace, leaving only valuable data behind. Despite this, the black hole named Kalor remained active and a new signal began to emerge, this time an acoustic message that sounded an awful lot like the Banshee's captain's voice. It mentioned the exit point coordinates and introduced the name Xenthrix. Xenthrix was one of our leading physics researchers and volunteered to investigate, hoping to recover the Banshee. As his ship approached the exit point, he entered some sort of trance and began to predict telemetry data before it occurred. Then, as happened to the Banshee, communication was lost and his ship vanished. Many years later, Xenthrix's ship would reappear, but it was empty except a journal entry titled What Was Will Be. For many years, investigations would continue. However, approximately five years after this event, strange occurrences began to happen across our empire. On the planet of Laganath, a religious artistic movement called the Coils of God emerged. It was centered on circular time and cosmic symbolism. Then an entire population vanished mysteriously, leaving only looping chalk signals behind. Another colony, this time on Mimira, originally settled in abandoned buildings. They experienced a population surge and then a sudden disappearance, erasing all evidence of the colony's existence. The events concerning the worm eventually climaxed, revolving around something called Omega Theory and the construction of the Omega Alignment. The alien scientists believed that they could summon the worm. They wanted its love, and they were successful. However, the worm did not arrive with arms wide to embrace its newfound worshippers. Instead, it appears to have consumed them, utterly annihilating their empire and its people. Wherever this creature is now, we will never know. But rest assured, should we find it, our battle fleets will be ready to send it back wherever it came. Thanks for watching, folks. If there's an entity out there that you think I've missed, please feel free to let me know in the comments. And if you want to hear more about Stellaris, please click the video on screen now.